Now I'd like to ask Mr. Duncan Mon, uh, an English dairy farmer. My name is Duncan Mon. I'm a third generation dairy farmer from Cumbria in Cumbria. We have farmed at Gatcher Mill Farm since 1945. The farm is 106 hectare and we grow grass and 20 hectare available. In 2007 a decision was made to get out of milking cows and we sold the herd. But after a three year break I was determined to restart the dairy herd because of my own interest and passion was dairy, particularly breeding and feeding. Through local and international purchases of dairy cows I built up the herd to 240 cows. However, a batch of heifers imported from the EU, I believed, introduced Mycoplasma bovis into my herd. Since 2012 we have had to cull batch after batch of cows that felt sick as a result of the disease. At the end of 2014 I have just had to cull the remaining cows and calves. I have, however, made a, made a decision to return into milking cows, despite the horrors of what Mycoplasma bovis has inflicted on my farm and my family. I have secured a good milk contract through First Milk, a UK farmers cooperative, to supply milk to Nestle, which will pay us based on constituents of our milk rather than on volume we produce. This allows me to maximise my return on farm and allows the milk buyer to secure a product that suits their manufacturing process. I will be paid 0.47 pence for every additional 0.1% of protein in the milk that we supply and I am able to increase the protein content of milk that I produce through careful breeding and selection, <coughs> breed selection and nutrition. This means that I can have a much greater level of control over my income and returns from my milk contract. This contract with Nestles has been essential financial backing from the bank to restock our farm. This time we, we will restock with an alternative breed that gives better butter fat and protein and we will also have strict restocking policy so that we only source animals from accredited sources with high herd health status. We have learnt many lessons from our experience with Mycoplasma bovis and so increased on-farm biosecurity will be another aspect we will focus on in the future. Access to credit would have been extremely difficult without the support of our milk buyer that is interested in traceability and quality of milk from farm to the end user. I know that the milk package encourages the use of compulsory written contracts. In the UK we have a voluntary code covering the terms of written contracts. However in my area in particular some farmers are not able to secure a contract with a processor and are instead selling their milk at spot market prices. This worked well for them at the top of the market last year, but they are now suff they're suffering now. The terms of their contract are irrelevant if there is not a contract available. The way my contract with Nestles works, I believe, is a good role model for returning value from manufacturers and retailers through the supply chain. Farmers will invest in their business, businesses, whether they are large or small, if they have the confidence that there will be a fair return for their product. Investment is not just getting bigger through or producing more milk. It can be in becoming more efficient or producing better quality milk or in technology that enables us a better quality of life or improving animal welfare. An intervention price does not support investment for these reasons as it will only encourage investment to produce more milk. I think it also discourages consumers of milk and milk products from investing in their supply base, as they know farm subsidy system will act as a safety net. It is only manufacturers such as Nestle who are beginning to take more responsibility for the supply, of, for the supply chain that are seeing beyond the system. I believe that retailers, manufacturers and consumers of milk are in the best position to support a fair return for farmers by encouraging more end users to invest in their supply base. The, they will be more engaged in the production process and so benefit of return more value to the farmers. Manufacturers and retailers need a security of supply, guarantee of a quality of production, traceability of supply and increasingly are interested in environmental reasons including measuring and taking steps to reduce the carbon impact of milk production and best practice guidelines of antibiotic usage to secure supply chain bonus payments. At the moment, retailers in the UK are particularly drastically undervaluing milk, using it as a loss leader to encourage shoppers to visit their supermarkets. 
Current retail prices are as low as 89 pence for four pints, about 1.16 euros for 2.2 litres. Milk is cheaper than bottled water, and this is a disgrace given that all the hard work that goes into producing a quality food product so that it is so beneficial to consumers. Milk is a superfood and nutritionally one of the best sources of vitamins and minerals available. A glass of milk is a source of protein, calcium, potassium, phosphorus, iodine, vitamin B2, B1 and B12. It contributes 19% of the calcium intake in the diets of UK adults. For our body to get the same amount of calcium that is obtained from a glass of milk, we would have to eat 63 Brussels sprouts, 11 servings of spinach or 4 servings of broccoli. Yet what most farmers are paid reflects none of this and, is, and that is a disgrace. One thing that could be done to improve this situation and improve consumer understanding of the benefits of milk is better branding. The work that Coca-Cola is doing on this in the US could be a lesson here. EU consumers are very used to buying branded products and have a huge amount of trust in brands, which adds great value to the basic product. More could be done to encourage multinationals to invest in retailing and promoting milk as a consumer product and in developing variations on the core product, such as 1% fat milk, grass-fed milk, high, milk high in omega-3, or with other specific nutritional features. Multinationals have a vast experience of consumer product branding and are much better at doing it than industry bodies. Ich finde es un it's absolutely impossible. We have a speaker here advertising Nestle and Coca-Cola. This is not acceptable. We're in the European Parliament. This is not some kind of advertising or marketing agency. This is not about Nestle. I think it's completely disproportionate what you're doing. Thank you very much for this comment. Could I ask the speaker to continue? Back to the speaker. Oh, Mr. Agnew. To the committee that this speaker is saying what he is doing to be able to remain in business. That is what we should be listening to. The names of the people are irrelevant. He has given them to maintain some authenticity. This is what he is doing to remain in business. He's getting involved with the end users of the milk. We have got to do this. Thank you. Yes, yes, we are going to listen. Uh, let's continue with the speaker. Encouraging milk to be better promoted and branded means that retailers and promoters will be better engaged in their supply base and have an incentive to invest in the security and consistency of supply. There have been many additional benefits such as in the supply chain efficiency. Through proper functioning supply chain relationships, farmers can be paid a fair price and investments made on farm that benefit the whole supply chain and wider community too. For example, we will be working with our milk buyer to monitor our greenhouse gas emissions on farm and reduce them where we can through supply chain payments. I do not believe that farmers work in collaboratively together to market their milk as encouraged by the milk package is the right answer for the UK. We do not have any producer organised here, Asians here, but we have a history of producer cooperatives. First milk, for example, of this. However, even as a farmer-owned cooperative, it is suffering from volatility in the markets and of, from its competitors and global actions such as any other. Farmers in the UK had a lot of trust in the milk marketing board. Large farmer-owned cooperatives like Dairy Farmers of Britain have failed at considerable cost to the dairy industry. It would be very difficult to get UK farmers to trust again that working cooperatively will improve their situation, so different solutions will work more effectively here. There is a lot of talk in the UK at the moment over whether a futures market for dairy produce would work. It is an interesting option and mirrors what is available in other commodity markets, but I think that it could be introduced more volatile, volatility, not less, and it does not return a value back to farmers. Another idea is an A, B quarter contract, similar to how sugar beet contracts work in the UK. This guarantees a higher price for a certain proportion of fresh milk. In conclusion, 
As a producer of milk, I face daily challenges in taking care of my animals and managing feed, fertility and hygiene. I do not believe that taking any additional responsibilities in marketing my milk is desirable. There are experts who are better placed to do this for us and my contract with my milk buyer is a good example of how such a relationship can work. I believe market distorting intervention should be avoided and that the current support system acts as a incentive to supply chain investment. I would like to envisage a future where more manufacturers and retailers take responsibility for their security of supply and environmental impact and consequently invest in an alternative milk products with strong branding that returns a value to farmers. A strong, effective, proper functioning supply chain would offer more value, security for everyone, from primary producer to end consumer. Mr. Agnew, please. Thank you. I've got two questions. One is for Mansell Raymond, and that is, could you give us an example of how you think the export credit insurance scheme could work? And while you're thinking about that, I then want to address everything else I have to say to Duncan Moore. And first of all, I'm very sorry you were so rudely interrupted during your ten minutes. What you were doing was telling the truth about what you were doing on your farm to maintain and establish your market. You were simply telling the truth. And if people object to that, then they shouldn't really bother coming here. You were hit with a devastating disease two or three years ago. Perhaps you could just explain the symptoms of that disease to those in here who are apparently interested in dairy cows so that they can learn from your experience. You have been a guinea pig. Secondly, could you tell us when you restart dairy farming, are you going to have to farm your cows in a different way? Thank you. Two minutes for our experts. Mr. Royman, two minutes, no more. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one quick answer to our learned friend in the back there, as far as what was the question? It was to do with credit insurance. I never asked for credit export refunds. I said credit refunds would only be asked for in real emergencies. What we are asking for and what we are looking for is something similar to the USA where they do give credit insurance where in a volatile world that we live, certain countries probably want to buy product. Companies are, afraid, are fearful of moving to those areas. It does need some political support, whether that's through promotion or through some sort of credit guarantees to allow business to start off with new markets, new countries. That's what we are talking about, just to move the market forward. We are not in favour at the present time of export refunds, but it has to be discussed within the Copa Cajica Working Party anyway. Mr. Mon, please. Hello. Uh, Stuart's question about what has happened to me as a farmer. I suffered a triple mycoplasma infection in my farm which resulted in the cows being culled, everything. If this actually becomes more apparent in other countries, you won't be sitting here debating what you're going to do with the extra milk. You'll be thinking where we're going to get the milk from. There's disease problems we need to get on top of, as this lady said, and antibiotic usage. I wouldn't want anybody to go through the last, what I've seen in the last two years. It has been horrific. To have half your herd die on you is not nice. I am very lucky that I have a contract with a milk buyer who is going to pay me a slightly better price if I produce what he wants. I know the lady was upset about mentioning names. Branding sells milk and milk products. It always has done. Kids don't go for a fizzy drink without looking at the branding. We need a better branding of milk and milk products in the EU and, school, and milk back into schools. And we also need to be a lot clearer on biosecurity, everything else, and work with your milk buyers and try and promote that through them to the end user. Not try and just grumble away thinking there's a problem, we're going to get through it. We're not. We've got to work to get through it. Mr. Agnew? Chairman, I, I, I normally play by the rules. I don't really think it is my turn to speak. Um, unless <laughs> you all insist you want to hear me again. But there the were... I was very interested in the... Pro <laughs> Not surprisingly, the Green Party don't want me to speak. But I, I know very little about the European Milk Board, but I was quite interested to hear what the lady had to say about it, 
in that if you produce too much milk, you get a considerably lower price. So I am an egg producer, and this was put to me three years ago, that I could carry on and get a lower price, or I could cut my production and get a higher price. Not surprisingly, I cut my production to get a higher price. Uh, and that was exercised across all of the producers in, uh, in our particular. I, it isn't a producer group, but it's called Noble Foods. And if somebody over on that side of the house objects to me mentioning a name, well, tough. Uh, <laughs> we did exert some uh, pressure on supply by doing that, but I, I'm not sure quite how the milk the European Milk Board operates. How many countries do you operate in? How many f producers are, uh, are with you? How many litres do you, do you wield, so to speak? And I would be very interested to hear what Mr David Dobbin has to say what he heard about that, because he's running a co-op. Would you adopt those measures? Thank you. Uh, to the question, is the European Milk Board proposals, do they have merit? I think they do. Not that we're trying to privatise quota, but that we do need some measures to try and give farmers signals in their pricing as to what uh, is an oversupply situation.